Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be evaluating an expression. We are given a radical equation, cube root of x plus cube root of y equals cube root of z, and we're going to evaluate x, y, z divided by z minus x minus y to the third power. Now, this problem was kind of suggested by one of my viewers, um, I think, in the comment section, but I couldn't find that comment. So if you're the one who uh, suggested this type of problem, like where the sum of the two cubes, the cube roots, is equal to the another cube root. Uh, and I think I was asking for um, clearing the radicals here. So that's what we're going to do. So let's go ahead and take a look. First of all, um, notice that if you replace x, y with certain numbers, you should be getting a z value, right? For example, if x is equal to 1, and then, you know, uh, if y is equal to 1, then you're going to get the cube root of z equals 2 which means that z is equal to 8. So 1, 1, 8 is actually going to be uh, kind of like a solution to this equation, right? There are obviously infinitely many solutions. Uh, negatives uh, work as well. Uh, and you can test out many different values. But I'm just going to go ahead and plug these in and see what happens. If you replace x, y, z with those values, you're going to get 1 times 1 times 8 divided by z minus x minus y. And you're going to go ahead and cube that. This is going to be 8 divided by 6 cubed. And we can go ahead and simplify it. Notice that 8 can be written as 2 cubed. So this is going to be 1 third to the third power, and that is going to equal 1 over 27. Now, we could also use different values. For example, if x is equal to 8 and y is equal to 8, then we're going to be getting 2 plus 2, right, which is going to be 4. And then from there, uh, the cube root of z is going to equal 2, uh, 2, 2 plus 2, which is 4. And the cube root of z equals 4 is going to give us z equals 64. So that's another uh, solution. And you can just go ahead and plug that in as well. 8 times 8 times 64 divided by z minus x minus y cubed. Let's go ahead and evaluate this expression, see what happens. This is going to become 64 minus 16, which is 48. So I can basically write that as, you know, uh, 48 to the third power. That's a pretty large number. What well, we can simplify, notice that 64 is 4 to the third power. So I can just write this as, you know, um, let's see. Uh, I can also write the 8 as 2 cubed. So I, everything can be written as a cube. So basically, um, you know, 2 to the third, 2 to the third, 4 to the third, divided by 48 to the third. And 2 times 2 times 4 is just going to be 16. So again, we get 16 cubed divided by 48 cubed, which is equal to 16 over 48 cubed. And that's the same thing as 1 third cubed, and that is equal to 1 over 27. So we notice that even though we use different values for x and y, uh, we're going to get the same, eventually get the same result. But this is by no means a proof. It just shows you that numerical answers give us, at least for this case, uh, the same answer. So let's go ahead and uh, you know manipulate this expression algebraically. So I'm going to start off with this. and very typical method here is cubing both sides. Let's go ahead and cube both sides. And when we do, we're going to get, so for the left-hand side, I want to use something, you know, more meaningful. Like if I'm trying to cube A plus B, I'd rather write it as A cubed plus B cubed. And then the, the terms in the middle by binomial theorem, A cubed, 3A squared B and 3AB squared, I would like to write them as 3AB multiplied by A plus B. So this is a really nice identity, uh, you know, that you can definitely use here. So if I use that, I'm going to be getting x plus y for a cubed plus b cubed because x, uh, the cube root of x is equal to a basically. And then plus three times a b. So this is my a and that's my b. That is going to be the cube root of x y, which is basically the product, multiply by the sum, which is the cube root of x plus the cube root of y. And the cube root of z cubed is just going to equal z here. And we don't really need to worry about the numbers being negative or positive because the cube root of any real number is well defined. So here, notice that this expression right here is equivalent to cube root of z. Great. So that gives me x plus y plus 3 times the cube root of now. I have cube root of xy multiplied by cube root of z. That is going to equal cube root of xyz. And the whole thing is equal to z. Now, my goal is to clear the radicals. Remember that. So in order uh, to get rid of all the radicals, I'm going to isolate the you know, cubic part, uh, cube root piece. So let's go ahead and do it. Uh, I will subtract 
x plus y from both sides. It's going to give me z minus x minus y. And then I'll divide both sides by 3. Okay, great. And then I would like to, at this point, and you kind of need to think about this problem ahead of time, right? Like they're, they're asking for x, y, z divided by that quantity, and we're almost there. So let's go ahead and cube both sides at this point because that makes sense, doesn't it? So let's go ahead and cube both sides, and we're going to be getting something nice because all the radicals will be cleared. We're going to get x, y, z is equal to z minus x minus y quantity cubed divided by 27. Now, remember, our goal is to find the quantity, the value of the expression x, y, z divided by this expression right here. So it would make sense if we divide both sides by z minus x minus y cubed, and that's going to leave 1 over 27 on the right hand side. If you remember, when we plugged in certain values, we always got 1 over 27, so that kind of matches up with what we found earlier. And this basically shows you that the value of x, y, z is always going to be 1 over 27, regardless of the initial x, y, z values you choose. Of course, we should definitely mention that uh, x, y, z cannot all be 0 at this point. And imagine what happens in the original equation. Uh, they can all be 0 because 0 plus 0 equals 0. But unfortunately, for our expression to be well defined, we cannot accept um, the zeros as a result. Even x by itself cannot be 0 because that would give us 0 divided by some number which is equal to 0. And this brings us to the end of this video. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.